In this video, I will be discussing and teaching you how to do endotracheal suctioning on a patient. The supplies needed for this task is a manual resuscitation bag with a hose connected to an oxygen flow meter. This will go into the wall in the patient's room so that you can over -oxygenate, oxygenate them prior to suctioning. Next, you will need a collector pin with the suctioning tube on the patient's side, suction tube for the wall side. You will need a vacuum regulator. Make sure that it is in proper working condition before you try to use it on the patient. This is very important because sometimes they just aren't calibrated correctly or perhaps they got dropped and something inside doesn't work anymore, but check it prior to using it on the patient. If necessary, you may need a specimen collection jar if the doctor or medical staff has ordered uh, testing to be done on the patient's sputum. You may want to have normal solution saline available to use for specimen collection or for cleaning out the suction tube between suctioning. You will also need one sterile suctioning kit. Inside you will have a sterile pair of gloves and a sterile suction catheter. These are the supplies that you will need to suction a patient. Alright, most patients are already set up for suction, so you probably won't have to go through with this. But if you do, you collect all the necessary supplies, you take your oxygen flow regulator and put it into the wall. Normally the metal sphere inside would hop to indicate that the oxygen is running, but I'm doing this in a dead lab right now, so there's no oxygen actually running out of this wall. Next you get your vacuum regulator and you put that into the wall and then you insert, you make sure to check on your collection container which side goes to the vacuum and which side goes to the patient. On this side, this is the vacuum side, so you hook it up to the vacuum. Alright, normally patients would have a uh, bed a holder on the wall to hold this to keep it from flying around, but we don't have one. <laughs> okay. Now that we have the basic setup performed, we're going to set the suction pressure to an appropriate uh, number for the patient. This patient is an adult, for, so we're going to aim for negative 100 to negative 120 millimeters of mercury. All right. If they were a child, it would be negative 80 to negative 100, and for an infant, it's negative 60 to negative 80, all right? But we're doing an adult. First, you're going to set it for regular suction, okay? And the, like I said, the patient is an adult, so we're aiming for negative 100 to negative 120. Your first instinct might be to turn it up to negative 120, or maybe, let's see, negative 150. And you're like, okay, we're ready to go. This is a terrible, terrible assumption to make, because we're going to occlude it and look how high the pressure jumps. It goes all the way up to negative 180. I'm pretty sure that would suck the lungs right out of the patient's throat. This would definitely cause atelectasis and barotrauma within, inside the chest cavity. Alright, so let's turn this down to about 60 and when we occlude it, it jumps up to 115. And when you're occluding it, you're occluding the tube on the patient's side of the collection tray. Okay. This uh, represents it's okay. This represents us actually suctioning the patient because when you get down there and the mucus plugs up the suction catheter, this is the pressure that's actually being exerted on the, on the patient. All right. So now that we've got that set up, let's go put on our gloves. All right. Now that you are you have the bare bones set up. For suctioning the patient, you should wash your hands, check the chart to make sure this patient is appropriate and needing to be suctioned, and then you go in and you actually visually inspect the patient. You may run their breathing treatment prior to suctioning the patient. This may help loosen up phlegm or anything else, open the bronchioles and let them breathe better. All right. If they are appropriate, 
to be suctioned, you make sure they actually need to be suctioned. If they're cognizant, you ask the patient, do you feel like you need help getting out, you know, the phlegm or the gunk, or do you think you're doing okay? And most patients will want to be suctioned, all right? And if that's the case, go wash your hands again. You never wash your hands too much. And when you come back, you're going to come back with your suction tray kit. So you have your sterile gloves, you set them on the patient's bed, or if they have a bedside table that's clear enough to use, you can use that, whatever you're comfortable with. In my case, I'm going to be using the patient's bed. And right now it's really low, so it's uncomfortable for me. So I'm going to go over here and raise the patient up. a more comfortable height for a person of my stature. All right. If the patient is too low for you or too high for you, feel free to tell the patient that you'd like to adjust their bed height and if it's okay with them, go through with it. There's no reason for you to stand around stooped or tippy-toeing trying to treat a patient. It's not good for the patient, that's not good for you. All right. So you've adjusted the patient's bed height. Now you're going to put on your gloves in sterile fashion. At at this point, you need to decide which hand you're going to use to suction, to hold the suction catheter on the patient, because it is very important for that hand to stay sterile, okay? I'm left-handed, so my more dexterous hand is my left hand, and that is the hand that I will use to hold the suction catheter. All right, you put on your gloves. Do not touch the outside of the glove. If you do accidentally touch the outside of the glove with your dirty hand, you just throw it away, go get a new set. Don't feel silly. It's better to be cautious than to introduce bacteria to the patient's lungs that they really don't need, all right? All right, now both of my hands are clean. Clean is different than sterile. Clean is the lesser of the two, but we're just going to use the word clean and dirty. My left hand will stay clean and my right hand is going to be dirty, even though it actually isn't dirty, figure of speech. All right, still clean, we're still both actually clean. All right, pick up your suction catheter. I like to wrap it around my hand so I keep really good control of the tip because the tip is the part. This is the part that's going to go into the patient's lung, and this is the important part to keep clean, okay? So why you want to keep really good control of it. Do you see how I'm holding this? Yeah. Okay. We're going to step over to the patient, or you've already got the suction going and set to the appropriate, appropriate power. We're going to hook it up. Now my right hand is dirty. It may no longer touch the suction catheter, except for red area, okay? Now we're hooked up. All right, now we are ready to go. All right, at this point, I hope you've told your patient that you're gonna do some suctioning and told them the, what the procedure entails if they've never had it done before, but we're going to. Mr. Smith, we're gonna suction you, okay? If they're on oxygen, you, you'll want to remove their oxygen device and attach this immediately and hyperoxygenate them for about two minutes. Okay? So you put this on there. You're going to manually do this for about two minutes. We're going to pretend two minutes has gone by. Okay? Take this off. Now, we're going to do the actual suctioning. The actual process of suctioning should take no more than 15 seconds going in and out. Because during that time, the patient has no air coming in. They're totally blocking their breathing, okay? It's very important that you keep good control of the tip. So I like to start out with, um, you know, holding it very shallow and holding the other end, keeping it taut, all right? So you go in 
Do not touch the outside because then it's contaminated. All right, and you're gonna go in until you feel resistance, then maybe a little bit. There you go. And then you're going to alternate occluding the device. You're gonna pull out. This will be covered in all sorts of good stuff. Try not to let that show on your face if you're grossed out by it. Okay, so you're gonna wrap it. After you withdraw the suction catheter from the patient's throat, you're either gonna clean it out with your normal saline or purified water if you have it available. I do not have it available because most institutions don't have it available. Okay, you're gonna wrap up the suction catheter making sure to keep the patient end inside so it doesn't come into contact with anything. All right, you're gonna let this loose and you're gonna quickly apply oxygen to the patient again. All right, and you're gonna do this for 30 to 60 seconds. And during this time, you're gonna assess whether the patient needs to be suctioned again, okay? Most patients, if they really need suctioning, they're gonna to need to have a second suction, okay? And at this point, you know, we're gonna pretend the time, a lot of time has gone by. We're gonna unwrap our hand and keep good control of the tip again. We're gonna tell him we're about, we're gonna go down. Mrs. Smith, we're gonna suction again, okay? Here we go, and down you go. Down, down, down. So you feel resistance and then come up. Okay. All right. Wrap it up and oxygenate. All right. All right. At this point, we're going to assume that he's been suctioned enough and that we've gotten as many secretions as we can with this method. All right. You're going to oxygenate him afterwards. Right, and set him back up on his oxygen device if he was on one. I'm going to turn off the suction because it's driving me nuts. Okay, and that is endotracheal suctioning. All right, at this point, you're going to do cleanup. You're going to wrap this up, pull it out, throw it away in the biohazard bin, um, put this back wherever you found it, you know, hang this up out of the way. Put everything back the way you found it as far as the patient is concerned. So I would lower this bed down to the height it was, ask the patient if there's anything you can do for them before you leave, and then do post-assessment. Make sure that their blood pressure is nor within normal limits, their heart rate, uh, make sure they're not cyanotic. These are things you're actually going to be doing throughout the process, especially the cyanosis. If a patient turns blue or their heart rate jumps up over 20 points during suctioning, the first thing you're going to do is stop. You're going to stop what you're doing, okay, and notify the doctor or the nurse at hand, okay? Um, all right. If the doctor has ordered specimen collection for testing, you're going to do it probably for the second section, okay? Because at that point, you're going to get the most um, interior suction. So what you're going to do is have the suction catheter. I'm still clean on this hand. I haven't actually touched anything. So you're going to hook up the, the colored part of the suction catheter to this part. And it's being difficult, of course. Alright. Hook that up. And then you're going to put this part into the suction side. Okay. So now it's pretty much just an intermediary, all right? And you're going to suction like normal. You're going to go in, you're going to go out, and hopefully you'll have gotten a specimen. If you haven't, if you've gotten a really small amount or it's stuck in the tube, this is when you really need to use normal saline. Do not use sterile water because sterile water is not found in the human body. Normal saline, however, is. So you use that to clean out the suction catheter and get whatever secretions you've sucked out into here. And then you remove the suction catheter, dispose of it, remove it this side, and you're going to close it. And I know this is going to be difficult because it's difficult and correct. Do -do -do. Look at that. You seal it like this, bag it up and mark it as necessary, and send it to whom it may concern. 
right, that is endotracheal suctioning. Thanks for watching.